So, yes, topic for today is prayer 101. How to pray, really, is how to pray. We are learning how to pray the biblical way. Our recommended text, of course, is the Believer's Foundation School Manual, which is um, available on Amazon. Is the is the um, actual lesson for this class. Everything that we are learning here is in that book. So I also call this topic the ACTS of prayer. The ACTS of prayer. I don't know why that is missing, but it's okay. The ACTS of prayer, which is um, those who have been in this class before know what the ACTS of prayer is and will learn it. But memory verse is from Jeremiah 29, verse 12 to 13. And we can all say together, one, two, go. Then, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I'll listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. One more time, let's read the memory verse together. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me. And I will listen to you and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your hearts. So you see there, when you search for me with all your hearts. So that comes back to that undistractedness that we we're talking about earlier when we we're speaking about the Holy Spirit. You must be totally undistracted when you are praying to God. The criteria for, for um, what's it called? For answered prayer is total focus. When you seek me and search for me with all of your heart. So prayer cannot be distracted prayers. Prayer has to be undistracted. Amen. When you pray, you must do it with focus. No distraction permitted. If you really want that prayer to have efficacy. Now you remember the song, read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to grow. I always say, read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day if you want to reign. If you want to reign as a kingdom priest, if you want to operate the scepter of power and dominion that God gave man from the beginning and the dominion he gave to us in Christ. Remember when Christ was living in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, he said, all power and dominion, all power and authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me and he gave us that power to go and make disciples on his behalf. So if you want to operate that power, then you must pray. You cannot escape prayer. And I know if I do a show of hands and ask everybody here, if you have a daily prayer life, apart from joining Watchman Arise in Imatru, do you have a personal prayer life? It's always shocking to know that people don't have prayer life or personal prayer time. Or maybe their prayer life does not exceed five, 10 minutes and they don't know how to pray. Today, I tell you, as you learn the secret of prayer, you will pray for one hour and you still be panting for more in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, I've gone to minister in churches. And it's the pastors sometimes will call me and say, thank you for coming to teach us about prayer. Because we didn't have a family altar. We don't have a personal prayer altar. You know, some people don't pray. They just mouth words. They just do my daily bread prayer. <laughs> In the car on the way to work or the way to an interview is when they pray. Or when there's fire on the mountain is when some Christians pray. But it should not be. Prayer is sweet communion. And I will show you in a few short minutes. But let's look at the model, the model prayer. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13. Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, from verse 9 to 13. I want us to read together. You can see the screen. I'm sure many of us have this prayer memorized. We learned it as children or in Sunday school. So let's read together Matthew 6, 9 to 13. And I'll tell you why I didn't, I didn't call it the Lord's Prayer. I call it the model prayer. Let's read together. I want to go. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts or our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us or as we forgive those who are our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so that's the prayer. We call it the Lord's Prayer. But the reason why we call it the Lord's Prayer is because this was how Jesus Christ taught, he taught his disciples how to pray. So it is actually not a mantra. It is not a, a chant. The Lord's Prayer, remember, I went to a Catholic school, um, in elementary school. Some of us have came out of the Catholic Church. Some of us came out of Anglican. Some of us came out of different churches. And we learned this as children, and we memorized it, and we chant it. In fact, the Catholic reader, they'll say, do 50 old Marys. They'll do, you know, uh, 50 Lord's Prayer, and all kind of uh, um, chants of the rosary. They call it praying the rosary. And then they do several of this chant. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ said we should not do. He said for he, he said that the heathen, thinking that by chanting the prayers over and over again, reading Psalm 23 over and over again, that God will hear them. No. So we're not supposed to chant this prayer. This prayer is a model, is a method of praying. And I will break it down as we go through the ACTS of prayer. So it said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. That's adoration. You are adoring his name. <laughs> and then he said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Confession, confessing our sin. Then thanksgiving, you see, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So that's the T aspect of the ACTF. And then supplication is when we implore him, when we talk to him, give us our daily bread. So you're asking him about things and your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. The minute you align earth's vision with heaven. Heaven hears you. The minute you bring down God's will on the earth, earth has no, no choice but to comply. So that is the aspect of supplication as we go quickly into the crux of the matter today. So I want you to note a very important aspect of prayer. There are three components. It says, our Father who art in heaven. So the question I ask for everybody, under the sound of my voice, or whether you come to this recording later, is that is he your father? Remember when we started this um, classes? The first class is salvation, salvation 101. And the instruction that we looked at over and again, over and again, is John 3:3. 3, 3. Except a man be born again, he cannot see. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, that is lesson two and three, he cannot enter. So, do you want to enter the kingdom? Do you want to operate as spirit? Remember John 3:8. The spirit blows wherever it wishes. So is everyone who is born of God. So are you spirit? Is God your father? John 4, 24. <laughs> he said God is spirit. And those who worship him, those who commune with him, those who relate with him, <laughs> must worship him, must relate with him, must commune with him in spirit and in truth. So are you spirit? Is your spirit reformed? Is your spirit reborn? Are you born again? That's essentially what it means to be born again. So the first line of the prayer says, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. So the question I have for everyone now is, is he your father? Because if he's not your father, he's not committed to answering your prayer. But because he's merciful, he answers so many prayers. And some people say, oh, here's my prayer. So you know what? I don't need to be born again. But you must be born again. That's what Jesus Christ said. And then you see here, he said, forgive us our debt. If you look at verse 14, I didn't make us read everything, but in your own spare time, please go and read the whole chapter or read from verse 5 to the end, verse 14. He said, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So our forgiveness is in on us forgiving others. So have you forgiven the last person who hurt you? Have you forgiven those who hurt you a long time ago? Or you are still regurgitating it. You are still regurgitating it. Noted. Or you are still, you know, recycling the pain. Because he said, forgive us our sins or our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So forgiveness is key. Three important components. The third one is gratitude. You see that the prayer starts with praise. And that's why in the image, you see us, we always enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise, Psalm 100, verse 4. And then we also exit with thanks. You see, every time we close our prayer, we close with giving of thanks. So there is a protocol of prayer, the model of prayer. You know, when you are in business school or you are in a master's program, advanced learning, or you are, they teach models to, uh, to children now, you know, 
I remember when I, when I was in the Department of Statistics in UI, they would teach you model theorems. So Jesus Christ is just a model of prayer. The method of prayer is a model, is, a, is an eternal truth. And if you can get this down, the ACTS of prayer, you have become a winner in the place of prayer. Because you know to enter with thanksgiving and adoration and to always exit with thanksgiving. Philippians 4, 6 to 8 gives us the picture of prayer, the summary of it. He said, be anxious for nothing. He said, boy, everything with thanksgiving and prayer, with supplication. He just summarized ACTS. He said, make your request known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. And then verse 8, he taught us what to think about after we have prayed so that we have perfect peace. So if you want to answer prayer, then you must enter with praise and you must seal it with thanksgiving. Always. I remember a beloved brother years ago said that the thanksgiving that we exist with is like the stamp that we put on our mailing envelope that allows our mail to be delivered in heaven. You know, we don't do physical mail anymore. Except we are sending parcels. We now send email, electronic mail. And we don't need any stamp. But you know that when you are mailing a physical letter or a greeting card, when you want that letter to get to its destination, what do you put on it? A stamp. So Thanksgiving is like the stamp that guarantees the delivery of our package or our letter to God. So you must always seal it with Thanksgiving. You don't exit anyhow. If you enter into a governor's office now, a mayor's office, or an official, a high-ranking official, or even the king, you enter with protocol. Same with entering with thanksgiving and exiting with praise. You, you do it with gratitude. So do not chant the lost prayer. From today, note that this prayer is not for chanting, but it's for you to look at it and say, did I enter adoring him, worshiping him, praising him, thanking him? Have I covered the area of trespasses and sin? Because the psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he won't hear me. So have I dealt with the iniquity? Have I dealt with the sin? Have I dealt with the grudges? Because, you know, it's int on obedience. He said, if we don't forgive, then we ourselves do not have forgiveness. So you must cover that aspect of confession of sin. Then thanksgiving is how you exit. Really, it should be A-C-S-T. But because we don't, there's no word that, like A-C-S-T. So that it's beautiful for us to remember. You know, we form the acronym A-C-T-S. I've been teaching this for years, by the way. If I find a better acronym, I'll use it. But this has worked for a real long time. So thanksgiving is how you exit. But supplication is what is sandwiched between your confessions and your exit from his presence. Each time you enter, make sure you do it. <laughs> now, <laughs> the Bible says in Psalm 46, verse 1, he said, it's the very present up in the time of trouble. I'm not saying that when you see a semi, in America, we call it semi, but you know what we call trailer. Like a long, those long drive. When I started driving on the highway, I was just like, I'll be praying in Tosca, Kabashin. I still do it from time to time because I live in Atlanta where there are like six lane streets, like on the highway, like six lane. And you just see some of them cut you off. Mm. Some people say strange things when somebody cut them off, but I know I start to pray in tongues and I say, Jesus, maybe in the midst of a challenge, you're not going to say, oh, Neymar Trip taught us that we should do um, ACTS. And then you're try trying to figure out ACTS. No. At that moment, Jesus is enough. In the time of challenge, is the very present of the time of trouble. All protocol, all bets are off. You don't have to wait and say, okay, Lord, let me enter into your presence with thanksgiving, enter into your court with praise. Just call for what you're, Lord, help me. Lord, deliver me. Yeshua, anything that comes out. Just call on Abba, you are my help. You know, so don't wait to follow protocol when you are in danger. But I'm just saying now, on a day-to-day -day basis, when you need to relate with him, please follow the model prayer. Amen. So what is prayer? Prayer is sweet communion. Please, I need timekeeper. If not, I could keep praying. I, I could keep teaching. So I know that we have about 24 more minutes to cover this material. Will this pray help me? Prayer is sweet communion with God. Prayer is not a chore. Prayer is not boring. Prayer is sweet. Prayer is communion with God the Father. Prayer is the other. Prayer is us going back to Eden. Remember Genesis 3.8. The Bible said that God comes out as it was his habit to come and commune with man in the cool of the day. God loves a cool atmosphere. God loves a flawless atmosphere. God loves a holy atmosphere. God loves a not pretense atmosphere, just like we are. Come as you are. God loves an atmosphere of, you know, of you being real with him. He comes there at the, at the, at the cool of the day. 
They were both naked and not ashamed. They came bare naked <laughs> before him. That's how God wants us to relate with him. And so that's how our prayer should be. Our prayer should not be filled with liturgies and dogmas and chants. And even sometimes it's not about the quoting of scripture. Though God honors his words when we pray. We bring his word back to him. But it's not about how much you can quote. It's about how you relate with him. It's the place of sweetness. I call the altar of prayer the altar of incense. Do you remember? For some people who have gone to all kind of, we've got, we all gone to all kind of churches, like, you know, white garment churches and, you know, churches that tend to be very deeply spiritual. I'm not saying anything is wrong with white garment churches. There are some saints in those churches, you know, so we're not judging any church. Some churches, um, you know, they burn candles. Some churches, they burn incense. But there are some intercessors, there's some prophets there who have remained undefiled. I found that in every church, even the Catholic church, there's a remnant. So I'm not here to judge any church. But you know what I'm talking about? There are some churches that burn candles more than the others. Some churches that burn incense. The incense is not what matters. The incense is actually a picture of the Old Testament, a shadow of the past, of the Old Testament. So the Lord actually called for it, instructed Moses of how the, the Levites must burn incense before him in Leviticus chapter 6 from verse 12 to 13, how they must burn it day and night. And the fire that burns on the altar, they don't bring it, no strange fire, is the one that releases the fire. Their own is just to present the incense and it catches fire. So that is exactly how we are supposed to bring our hearts to him. And his zeal consumes us. His fire envelopes us just like the day of Pentecost. And so prayer is supposed to be that communion where we bring our prayer. I don't know if you've ever stood in front of a mirror before and you release your breath. What do you see? Something like smoke. So your prayer is a sweet incense. Uh, the Bible said in Psalm 141, it said, let my prayer ascend to you like the sweet smelling sacrifice or like the evening sacrifice. There is morning incense. When we pray in the matter, we are not praying randomly from the book of Luke chapter one. It said that the hour of incense, um, the father of John the Baptist, Zechariah prayed, in the innermost court, inside, as the priest assigned in the order of Abia or Abijah, when we call it in English, Abijah. You know, it was in the order of the, 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 the prophets. It was the one that was assigned to go into the holiest of all. He was praying and there were some other intercessors praying in the, in the outer courts. And the Bible says that an angel appeared. So every time we release our incense, it was the one burning incense. Incense is prayer. So it's not about the physical incense. But have you noticed that incense has sweet smelling fragrance? Even your morning breath, God smells incense. So your mouth will not be closed. Open it. It's a time of dialogue. And prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is not like, give me, give me, my name is blessed. Give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Or bless me, bless me, my name is blessing. And we are busy scabashing at God. There must be a time where we calm down and we let him speak back to us. Prayer is a two-way street. Prayer is us speaking to God, just like in the garden, back to Eden, a man speaking back to God. Prayer is a place of worship. Prayer is primarily worship. I quoted John 4, 24 before, where I said God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So what's your prayer life like? Is your prayer life mechanical? Is your prayer life like liturgical? Is your prayer life scripted? The only reason why we script our prayers in the Imatrup is because so many people come not knowing how to pray. And then I've noticed in the past, because I talk very fast and I pray very fast, especially when the hand of God rests upon me, I would just be quoting the scriptures and people would be like, slow down, we don't know what you are saying. Even now that we still script the prayer as much as we can, people will come and say, what you are praying is not looking like what is on the screen. I say, you know, we just put it there so that people can follow. Amen. There's someone who is um, interfering. Can I don't get to it. Can you please mute yourself? It needs to be a dialogue, a place of fellowship. God wants us to fellowship with him constantly. And that is what prayer is all about. Prayer is very simple. Prayer is very beautiful if we just catch the secret of it. Prayer is not to fulfill our grocery list. Prayer is not, ah, this is the list of things I want. Many of us know how to do that. Prayer is simply communion. And it is very sweet. Prayer is not laborious. Prayer is, you know, when you come and you're like, many of us, we have our besties, our friends. Some of us have, you know, our spouses, you tell your spouse everything. 
some of us, especially when we just met our spouse or you're dating, you are telling them all the sweet, no, everything you, you are keep, keeping up, texting, you know, doing all kind of things. That's what prayer should be. Constant communion, relationship. Some of us have that relationship with our parents. Those of us who are parents know we have our children. We are constantly related to them. I've not seen one child who is a love child, who needs protocol to enter their father's presence. We all just kind of badge into our Abba, into our daddy, into our, you know, and sometimes the relationship may be with the mother, but you know what I'm talking about. It's just sweet communion. It's nothing official. That's what our prayer life with the father should be. It's like picking up from the last place you spoke. I have friends that we, we, we've not spoken this year. I have friends that maybe we have not spoken in two years. I don't know if you have friends like that. And then the minute you start talking, you are catching up from the last conversation as if that time did pass. That is how communion with the Father should be. Constant update, constant relationship, constant communion. All the patriarchs of old who made a mark in that generation were intercessors. They knew how to pray. Daniel prayed. Esther prayed, Abraham prayed. Did you see how conversational the, the, the prayer of Abraham was with God in Genesis chapter 18, when God said, that seeing that you are my friend and you are going to raise a generation for me, I cannot be doing something next door and not come and talk to you about it. That is how God values intercessors. He will tell you things before they happen. He came to tell Abraham and Abraham said, ah, I know that the sin of Sodom is great, but Lord, will you permit if there are 50 people, will you spare Sodom? God said, yes, I will. He said, please permit me. I know that I'm mortal, I'm a human, but you are God. Can you permit if 30 people? He said, yes. I said, look, please, please don't be angry with me. Will you permit? And he starts to negotiate until he got to 10 because he was so sure that I raised that boy right. I raised a lot. There must be 10 people in his house, himself, his wife, his children. He comes like, there should be 10 people. And he stopped. If you are negotiated up to two, I'm sure God will have approved it because he's an intercessor. An intercessor is a divine negotiator. God looks for them in every generation. Will you be that intercessor? God is counting on you. Heaven and earth is looking for a man who will intercede. Somebody. Heaven is always looking for that man. In the generation of Ezekiel, God found him. In the generation of Daniel, God found him. It was one man that covered the destiny of all of Israel. In the, in, the, in, the, in the generation of Gideon, God found one man. Have you noticed that under the terrible tree, he was having a conversation with an angel. That's an intercessor. God is always looking for one man. He can stand on one man to change the world, the, the destiny of the whole world. God is just looking for one man. He said, I sought for a man in Ezekiel 22, 30, and I found none. Will you be the one that will intercede for your family, for your generation, for your community, for your neighborhood, for your city, for your nation? or your generation. God is always seeking for one man. Someone that he has communion with. Commun Have you noticed communion, communication is the same thing. God is looking for, it's a communication between God and man. A dialogue is not a one-way street, it's a two-way street where you are talking to God and God is talking back to you. You see several people who prayed. Anna, it was conversational. Abraham, it was conversational. Adam, it was before he became liturgy and dogma. It was always conversational. You see the way Jesus Christ prayed. Jesus Christ's prayer was so sweet that the disciples said, ah, we love the way you pray. Teach us how to pray. And in Luke 11, 1, the Bible said, now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he stopped, when he ceased, his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just like John taught his disciples to pray. Your prayer life must be so sweet that people are like, I love the way you pray with ease. I want to pray like that. I want to learn it. And there are three dimensions to prayer. There's a right way to pray. Like I just said, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And so you must learn it. And so there are three dimensions to prayer. I love this aspect. Many of us think that prayer is just kabashi, God, that fire, thunder. <laughs> Remember the sons of Zebedee. When they were going into Samaria, about the time that Jesus Christ was about to be betrayed and crucified. And they were going to Jerusalem. On the way, they passed through Samaria. And the Samaritans did not allow them to pass through. And the sons of Zebedee, they are called sons of thunder. Some of us are sons of thunder. I, for one, because of our assignment. It's not because we, <laughs> and some people, there are some sons of mercy have had a situation where in the past, about 10 years ago in Chicago, I was with two sisters. One of them is just a minister of mercy, <laughs> deep compassion. 
I operate with mercy, but maybe in the area of benevolence, but not prayer. Me, I'm a son of thunder in the place of prayer. I'm like Elijah, I call them fire. So that is, you must understand your spiritual uh, DNA. So this person was like, no, Jesus Christ said, if they slap you on the right cheek, turn the left. <laughs> Actually, it's right, it's scripture. Said, so should we be cutting them? Should we ask that? Ah, the Bible says, suffer not a witch to me. They mess with me. Fire and thunder. <laughs> we are both right, theologically, scripturally. But do you know that there are different aspects to prayer? There's a place for you to be gentle, gentle as doves. And there's a place for you to be shrewd like serpents. If they bite me, I bite them. Bible said the enemy will come before you one way and flee before you seven ways. But you need discernment to know when to operate with mercy and when to operate with judgment. I remember I was sharing the testimony. I don't know if it was the Believers Foundation School last week or in another meeting, maybe with our leaders as we were praying. I said that somebody was really, really, and I think it was the Friday before I went to the retreat last week. I said that the person was just, you know, harassing me in the business that I said, Lord, just give me this business to do on the side so that I generate money and I'm not worried about finances. The person began to bother me. And I prayed in the Holy Spirit. I said, should I return his money to him? In the Holy Spirit, no. Say, pray for him for his salvation. I just started interceding for him for salvation. I kid you not. I went for the retreat. Next morning, the balance was already waiting in my account. The person that was trying to fight me and harass me because I wasn't going to even return the deposit to him. And the Lord said, no, just pray for his salvation. He's going through a lot of harassment himself. is under a lot of bondage. So that's where you need to be able to discern the kind of prayer you need to pray. Amen. And so there are three dimensions to prayer. Prayer is worship. It's primarily relating with God. I've already told you this. Um, John 4.24. Those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the first part of our prayer in Matthew 6.9, remember it's 9 to 13. Our Father, who has the name of Lord be your name, or hallowed be your name, which is worship. Prayer is primarily worship. It's for us to relate with our Father. The second aspect of prayer is that it builds us up. So when you are worshiping, who are you speaking with? You are speaking with the Father. But when you are working out, when you are building up yourself, Jude 120, can someone open to us? For us, Jude 120, I know it by heart, but I want someone to open. If you can unmute yourself, quickly read for us Jude 120, if you are in the New King James Version, or any version that you have, quickly. Read for us Jude 120 and 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. If you are there, unmute yourself and read either one. Jude 120. Come on, come on, come on. It's an interactive class. Somebody open and read for us Jude 120. But Amen. you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Bothe. It said, beloved, building up yourself in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost or in the Holy Spirit. If you read from the Amplified Version or any other transition that we have, it will say building up yourself like a spiritual edifice. So you see the reason why I put work out there. You are building up capacity. You are building up strength. Whoever is in 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, read for us, please. 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. Read. 1 Timothy 4. Bible student, please make sure that you are engaged. When I call the next scripture, someone else should help us. Sister Bosa, you can still go ahead. First Timothy First. 4, 7 and 8. Okay, but sister, reject, thank you. Yes, ma'am. But reject profane and old wives' fables and mm -hmm. exercise yourself towards godliness. Exercise. For bodily exercise. Yes, ma'am. For, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things having promise of a life that now is and of that which is to come. Amen. 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 So I want you to go back to the B part of seven and read exercise. Read that one. Read, read it. Yes, ma'am. But rather... Exercise. Exercise okay, read, read yourself. Uh -huh. Okay. But rejects profane and old wives' fables. Wives babbling. Uh -huh. And exercise yourself towards godliness. Thank you. Just pause there. So some of us are exercise um, junkies, especially in this age of eating right, intermittent fasting, you know, working out and all that. And we see, for those who have ever gone on a treadmill or do prayer walk or run, you see there's a runner's high. The first time I started working out, hey, the whole body was aching. Everybody has said, ah, this, this is how this thing is. But after a while, when you break past that initial exercise, 
your body will start to long for it. Your body will start to enjoy it. I learned not to exercise in the night because I already don't sleep at night. People always pissing me and say, you don't sleep. I'm like, oh, don't worry, I know my assignments. That's another story for another day, by the way. But I noticed that when I exercise in the night, I won't sleep because why? Your adrenaline kicks in. Those who understand the science of the body know what I'm talking about. Your endorphins kick in. Your, your, your natural pain um, um, killers, they are your brain, they kick in. The adrenaline comes, comes alive. Every cell in your body comes alive. Physical exercise. He said for, he said, but physical exercise profits you. The Bible calls this a little. Imagine now, if you start to build up yourself in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Is that not what I said we did just before class? The Holy Spirit said, I was feeling so, there's no word to use. Rather than say nasty, my body was just like, you need to go and sleep. I needed to just crawl under my, my, because my, there's a place for rest too. I needed to just call on my black. But I said, no, after class, I will sleep. But right now, body, wake up. Holy Spirit, what should I do? He said, move around. I'll just start to pray in tongues, start to pray in tongues. And I began to pray in tongues. And I called somebody else, my my Daniel, Shandra, Meshach, and Abednego, your Azariah, and, 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 and Michelle. Call them. You ask somebody, your prayer body, somebody who you can call and we can step each other up. The Bible said, iron sharpens iron. It is sharpening yourself in the spirit. It is edifying yourself in the spirit. It is building up yourself in the spirit. Imagine if physical exercise will reduce, release endorphin, release all the um, cortisol, serotonin, and activate your neurotransmitters. Imagine what it's doing to your supernatural transmitters, activating it like steroids. And the reason why Christians don't pray is because they don't know the secret of these things. Have you not noticed how you are just weak and sloppy and you're not even feeling like worshiping God? And you get into a spiritual atmosphere where God is being worshipped intensely. And so it's as if everything breaks off. That's exactly what praying in spirit does for you. Or praying in your understanding. When it's done right. So it will build you up. It's that beloved, building up yourself in the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And then like I was giving an example of the two sisters I was in. Um, in a conversation with a few years ago, I learned not to argue. I learned that one from college. I thank God for the, my teachers in University of Ibado. I don't get into unnecessary contention because it's, there's no doctrine of co argument or contention in, in, the, in the scriptures. So when people start getting contentious, it's unprofitable. It's <laughs> babbling, just like we just read from 1 Timothy chapter 4. Said, avoid old wives' tales and the babbling. Just go into praying. So when we start having those was she said ah, she was quoting for Matthew six. Um, if they need a, a a shirt, give them your jacket. If they want you to go one mile, go. If they slap you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. We are not supposed to be cursing people. And I said, oh, so Exodus twenty two eighteen was it for? In which is all repentance. I'm not asking. The Bible said we should commit that person to, <laughs> uh, to the spirit for the destruction of the flesh, so that their soul will be saved on the day of of reckoning. There are some people that you must commit to God for death. Because they, if, if not, that's why some people, they die. <laughs> I, I'm talking about high-level spiritual warfare now. They die contentious death. They die terrible death. Why? Because when God hijacks them on their deathbed, that's the only time they will give their life to Christ. I have a relative who, the only time, she was a self-professed witch in Ilefe, self-professed witch in, <laughs> in Ijebu, the high-ranking Ifa official, all the titles that you can imagine in witchcraft, sorcery, and everything. Top witch in Ife, top witch in Ijebu, because she's related to me on the Ife side of my family. And everybody knows that she went to a Romila church. She self-professed witch. When she was going to die, because prayer was too much. I remember there was a time my, my, my <laughs> the Holy Spirit told me, go into your wedding album and pick out one particular picture. He led me to it. He said, do you want to know the principalities and powers in your family? The evil personalities in your family go and look at your um, marriage album and i went to pick it and he showed me this one on the right and this one on the left in my father's family and set up praying for them i started praying for her she gave her life to christ on her deathbed she had about three or four months she was bedridden her sores her, 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 her leg started to decay they almost amputated it i'm not sure if they even amputated it and she started to i'm, I'm giving somebody secrets right now warfare and she started to she started to cry that onumi last failed her and all the other deities and pastors went to visit her from cac and she gave her life to christ 
Many people in my family, when I talk to them, I say, so and so gave her life. They say, it's a lie. <laughs> that woman did too much than I said she did. She gave her life to Christ. There are times when we pray in the spirit. If we pray in our understanding, we just want to judge such a person. But God's ways are past right now. His compassion fail not. He loves every one of us to, to the extent that he calls us to die for. He will die for the violent sinner, including Putin, including Zelensky, because Zelensky, no, <laughs> including all of those tyrants, including Buhari. I've been honest how much we pray for Buhari to kick bucket and they still kick it. Because God is more concerned about his eternity than the havoc is wrecking over Nigeria, the anarchy and the abdication of leadership. But God is concerned about his eternity. And so God doesn't look like the way we look. And that's the reason why we must learn to switch it in the spirit when we pray. So there are different aspects to prayer. There's worship, our communion with the Father, and speaking to him. There's workout. And this aspect of working out is where you speak to yourself, where you make confessions and affirmation. And when you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are speaking to yourself. The Bible said, building up yourself in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Remember, Romans 10. 17 says, faith comes by hearing, and hearing what by the word of God. And that's why affirmations are so powerful. Because it will resonate with your spirit, and your faith will keep growing. And then warfare. Ah, I love this one. Like I said, I'm the son of fire and thunder. I'll be called on fire. And fire will obey you. And that's the reason why sometimes God will deal with our, our temperament, our anger. Our... There was a time when my first reaction, when I'm facing contention is to start to rain curses like the source of Zebedee and go say, ah, 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 slow down, slow it down. I know you can curse. I know you can call down fire, but why don't we do it this way? And that is as our work increases with God. It's not always fire and thunder. Sometimes God wants to temper mercy, but we know all the dimensions of prayer in a better and a newer way in Jesus' name. So the Bible says in Mark eleven twenty three, say, as surely I say, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. If you have whatever you see, if you command it, it will be done. Second Corinthians 10, 3 said, do what we walk in the flesh, but we are not of the flesh. He said, we do not walk according to the flesh. So prayer is warfare. Prayer can be warfare. Prayer can be worship. Prayer can be building up yourself. In fact, that place of worship, you know that some churches, all they do is soaking. <laughs> they do, from morning to night, they all, they, all they do is soaking. No, no, no warfare. They will tell you not to war, not to wage war. Ah, no, don't wage war. Just worship God. Just soaking. The devil is knocking the person black and blue and giving them migraine neck injury. So just be worshiping, just worship, just soak. We soak. There are some times when you need to call down fire. And there are some times when we are too engrossed in warfare, we forget to worship. Some of us are just in hyper warfare mode. Maybe we grew up in clam, CSP or, or mountain of fire. Like I said, I grew up in CSP, so it's always fire or thunder. <laughs> it's not always so. Sometimes you need to learn to soak in his presence and just worship. And that time when he's speaking to yourself. So worship is speaking to the Father. Workout is speaking to yourself. Warfare is what? Speaking to the mountain. Speaking to the enemy. Commanding. Contending. Amen. Is to answer prayer. Number one, 1 John 5, 14. He said, if you pray, if you can find his will concerning anything, if you pray, we have this confidence that he hears us when we pray according to his will. What is his will? His word. So the Bible says in 1 John 5, 14, I'm going to um, assign the next few scriptures so that it's interactive as well. I like it when we're interacting. I wish it was a life lesson. And I call forth our ministry building where we'll be doing life lessons all through the day. I love to teach. I love prophetic teaching. I call for Neymar Truth's mandate. Where will we have a building where different levels of teaching are going on? Prophetic school, deliverance school, healing school. We have different teachings, Believers Foundation school. Every kind of teaching going on in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So 4 John 5, 14, it said now this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is the confidence. Look, look, when you pray God's word, you pray with confidence. I don't know if you've noticed. If you start praying your way, I'm going to give a testimony. One of our sisters, in fact, two of our siblings are here. We're praying concerning her husband. He was in the hospital. And they told her, they said, he's not doing well. He's not breathing. He's choking. He's this, he's that. And they start to, you know, hype everything. And say, excuse us, Mrs. So-and-so. And she went out of the... Uh, the emergency, the, the situation. And she went, she just called me, ah, Pastor Rennie, Pastor Rennie, ah, um, so and so is not doing well. 
And they saying that, oh, I should get out of the place. I she said, I said, just calm down. Let's begin to pray. And we began to pray. And I saw that she was praying out of fear. She was really panicking. I said, ah, this is not working. No. This woman is just negating every decree I'm making. Oh yeah, wait, let me send you something. So I have decrees for healing. I have decrees for the work of my last year. I was going to such warfare that I wrote on that uh, affirmation that described my present and my future. I said, for the things that are now and the things that are to come, you must decree it. In Genesis 1, God saw darkness and he said, light be. You must know where to dig your light from. <laughs> and I made affirmations and I began to decrease. And that is my go-to. Anytime anything wants to get confusing, I go back there. I remind myself that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I remind myself that I am not condemned. I remind myself that I am a befe, a beke. <laughs> you know, I remind myself that God died for me. He died for me. He, he says I'm to die for. I wrote all of these things down so that when the enemy is lying in my ear and say, you are condemned, you, you are useless. You go, God cannot use you. I remind him that you know what I am useful, and he died for me, and he called me, and he said the right old man falls seven times, but the Lord raised him up. I'm not even falling, I stumbled, and I remind myself constantly with those affirmations. I told her, I said, Yeah, take I sent her decrees for faith healing. At that time, I had crafted it for a particular sister who is going through a particular situation, and it was just handy. I just gave it to her. I said, Start to decree, put your husband's name there, and we began to decree. And we made like 50 or 70 decrees. We didn't find me, they told her that you had come down. And that thing happened. I said, nothing happened. And there was same visions immediately. Why? Because we were praying scripture. I saw that the cadence uh, of our prayer changed, our confidence changed. Why? Because she was handling the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, The word of God is quick and powerful. Uh, pardon me. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, so that we should fight, we should wage our war with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You must decree the word. So if you can find God's word for any situation, you will win. And then prayer, kiss to answer prayer. You want God to answer your prayer. <laughs> prayer evangelism. How do you do prayer evangelism? There are some people you are not confident to go and meet in person. I remember I had some managers when I came to America. Then my first manager was a gay person. Marcus is still on my list. My second or third manager also was still a gay person. Lance Broly is still a prayer <laughs> team can, can testify to that. Then my prayer is prayer evangelism. I know that there are some people that we have, they'll be neighbors with me in heaven. They'll be on Neymar through Bolivar in heaven. Why? Because I've been praying for them ever since. I've been praying for some people for 20 years. Johnny Depp is on my list. I pray for him personally. I took it up. There are some people that God will put in your in your prayer. In your prayer tentacle, it will tell you, pray for this one. It's your own. For example, I don't have anything against Kanye West. It's on our ministry prayer list, but I don't have any personal passion for Kanye West. But Johnny Depp, I have passion for him. Uh, will Smith, I have passion for him. Oprah Winfrey, I have passion for her. And um, Steve Harvey, I have I'm telling you this name because I pray for them for years. Tyler Perry is on my list. I pray for him every day for years. There are some people that in your prayer jurisdiction, you are more passionate about them. Taylor Swift is on our list. I don't even remember to pray for until I look at that list because she's not my passion. But there are some people God will give you passion to pray for. In John 15, 16, say, you did not choose me, I chose you. That you will bear fruits. I've appointed you that you should bear fruits and your fruits will abide. He said that whatever you have, the Father in my name, he will give you. If you can learn to align yourself with God's will and start to pray. Remember I said your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. If you can find his will and pray it, is passion on the earth and start to pray it. And then another key to answer prayer is prayer for nations. Have you not noticed that most intercessory ministries are not self-centered? They pray for nations. I know a prayer ministry that prays for Israel every day. If I'm in Nigeria, I'm like, this passion for Israel. But you know that the way they are passionate about Israel is the way I'm passionate about Nigeria. Wake me up in the night, pack, pack, I'm praying about Nigeria. I'm passionate about Nigeria. God shows me visions about Nigeria. Give me words about Nigeria. The Lord gave me at the beginning of this month as we moved from FFM, January to February. Isaiah 60 from verse 1 to the end. The Lord confirmed me in the mouth of the son of Korah in Nigeria. Confirms his word. Why? Because that is my passion. What is your passion? God may give you passion for Australia more than he gives you passion for Nigeria because you are assigned to Australia. God may give you passion for Brazil, and you don't even live in Brazil. I pray for Brazil a lot, and I don't even, I've never been to Brazil, but I know I've been there in the spring many times. God gave me passion for France. When I went into France, I felt something, and I know I can never let France go. And I know we're going to have Ignite France in the, in the coming year, or in the coming years. 
Just I have, a, I have passion about United Kingdom. I keep returning to the United Kingdom every time, now and then. Sometimes twice a year, sometimes three times a year. Why? Because I have an assignment to the United Kingdom. Our greatest presence apart from America is in the UK, Nigeria, and Australia. So you want to tell me I do not have assignment to those nations? There is. So prayer for nation is a key to answer prayer. Because we were faithful in little, God has en entrusted us with much. Prayer evangelism, prayer for nations. I've been praying for some nations for years, and I will not stop till I see my master face to face. And guess what? The gate of those nations attend to us. When you show up, everlasting does lift up. They're like, ah, this is a gatekeeper here. They have to bow. Everything bows. And you must pray with undivided attention. Remember our memory verse, Jeremiah 29, 12, 13. He said, when, in that day, when you come and seek me, when you pray to me, and you seek me, search for me with all of your heart. So when you are praying, are you praying with all of your heart? Or are you praying and you are still shopping on Amazon.com, Walmart.com, or you are doing, ah, I need to buy diaper. Even if you need to buy diaper, even if you need to buy bread and butter, that's something I learned from Mama Joyce, Joyce Meyer, a long time ago. She said, every time you come to your prayer altar, just have a notepad right there. There are things that the enemy will be putting in your mind, distracting you, write it and say, we attend to you later and focus on your prayer. Call yourself back to yourself. Undivided attention. When you pray with undivided attention, Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, instead the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro. On the earth, seeking for those, he will show himself mighty on their behalf. Seeking for those. Do you know God is looking for someone to just, he wants to do a miracle. He's just saying, where's my son? Where's my daughter? Who is praying in Australia? He just make sure that you attend to everything. Give him a pass for everything that he's saying. Everything. Because he's sought for a man. Someone will stand in the gap that he will not destroy it. But the Bible said he found none. Thank God in our generation he has found us. Because you are an intercessor. And you must do it with undivided attention. You must do it with focus. And you must do it selflessly. Someone please open for us Proverbs 31, 8 to 9. Or mute yourself when you find it. And when you are there, just say amen so I can pause. Pray selflessly. Proverbs 31, 8 to 9. Pray earnestly. Another person, open James 5, 13 to 18 for us. James 5, 18, 13 to 18. He's talking about Elijah who prayed with passion and pray in the spirit. Romans 8, 26, we all know that he said that, beloved, eh, eh, no, no, beloved. He said, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the spirit helps our infirmity, our weakness, our inability to articulate prayer properly. He prays for us according to the will of God. He prays for us. He makes tremendous power available. He prays through us and in us and for us. And that is why we must learn to pray in the spirit. And that's why we did Holy Spirit baptism before we did this class. Because if you know how to pray in words, ah, yakatulia. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, you are praying at an exponential dimension and you are making tremendous power available. Proverbs 31 8. Please read for us, Sister Ola. Proverbs 20, 31 8, 8 to 9. 9. Open your mouth with this, open your mouth for the speechless. In the course of all, who are appointed to die. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Amen. So you see, we are supposed to open our mouth for those who have been appointed to die. So if the Bible says open your mouth for those who have been appointed to die, that means your mouth can reverse death. Have you not read in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20 to 22, that the power of life and death is in the tongue. He said a man will be satisfied with good from his lips. So your mouth can overturn the appointment with death. So even when they give somebody two weeks to live, you can overturn it. I see so many people call me in panic. Hey, hey, sis, do you know, they gave me a diagnosis. Ah, they found a lump. Ah, I found a lump. I remember one of my sisters called me. Two years, September, my birthday. Ah, was it? Yes. Called me on September 13th. We're on our way to a program. Called me, said, ah, hey, sis, if I, a lump. I said, let's pray. I said, God, please, even if you don't want to do anything today, for my birthday, give us these gifts. By the 18th, we were going for evangelism. I was coming from one program and we we're going to another program. She called me and said, guess what? No lump. They could not find it. The doctor, she went for a wellness visit. They found lump on Monday. This several tests by Friday, lump had disappeared. Where did you go to the cafe? Why? Because there's a God who answers prayer. You know, I don't know water. He will burn it to shaft. He said that his enemy knelt like wax before him. And if we can call, he's saying, you call. Lift up your mouth on behalf of the speechless, those who have been appointed to die. Lift up your voice on behalf of the destitute and the needy. And he said he will hear. 
So what are we waiting for? Why are we not praying? We must be praying. I know our time is up. My alarm went off. If you have anywhere you to be, please, you can go. But for those of us who are still enjoying class, can you still permit me to go another 10 minutes? I promise I will go over. Amen. And we go on. You can give thumbs up because I don't like to force class. If you, if you are done, we are done. If you need to get off, we can get off. God bless you. So the next scripture I said we should open to is James 5, 13 to 18. If you are there, please read for us quickly. James 5, earnestness in prayer. Is anyone among you suffering? Yes, Let sir. him pray. Mm. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is pause anyone... Pause, man. Pause. So that we don't waste time. Is anyone what? The first one. Suffering. Suffering. So the antidote to suffering is what? Prayer. Mm. Is anyone cheerful? Let him do what? Sing psalms. Sing psalms. That's why in our ministry, we sing some, we sing some from, we sing songs of scripture. The Lord taught me this a long time ago. Let me tell you, the minute you can align your voice with the song of heaven, heaven will come down into your situation. One thing I forgot to mention in 1 John 5, 14, Psalm 119, verse 89, write it down. This scripture is my lemma when it comes to prayer. He said, forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. You want to settle any mat matter on the earth? Settle it in heaven. Take the word of God to God. He said, concerning the work of man, command me. If you can take his word back to him, he will, he, <laughs> his anger bound. He said, he honors his word above all of his name. Find that word and then take it back to him. Is any cheerful? Sing some. Is any suffering? Let him pray. Prayer solves suffering. Reverses it is the only answer for suffering. Please keep reading, man. Is anyone among you sick? Sick. Let him call for the elders mm. of the church and mm. let them pray for, let them pray over him. Did you hear? And pray. When you are sick, what is the antidote to sickness? Prayer. Pray. Keep reading, man. Let and, and let them pray over him, mm -hmm. anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Mm. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Yes. And the Lord will raise him up. Oh. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Amen. Did you see the mother prayer comes to bear? Forgiveness of sin. The healing comes. Prayer. Call for the elder. Eldership does not necessarily mean older. Eldership just means the appointed ones, the leaders of the church. It can be your prayer partner as well. Call for the elders and anoint with oil. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. If you have committed sin, let that sin be confessed. Say confessing your sin to one another. Please keep reading, I believe there's a part we have not touched. Confess your trespasses to one another and Thank pray you. for one another. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Keep going. That you may be healed. The mm. effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that yes. it would not rain. And, and he did not it. rain on the land for three years and six yes. months. Mm. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the yes. earth produced its fruit. Amen. Your mm. prayer can stop rain. Your prayer can start rain. Meaning that your prayer can rain thunder and fire, and your prayer can reverse the judgment to mercy. Elijah was a man of like passion. I'm a King James version of so I memorized the scripture in King James. <laughs> he said he prayed that it will rain not, and it did not rain. He prayed again and it rained. So you can pray, you can reverse situation. Elemental forces will attend to you, just like Joshua I can say, stop, rain, stop. I remember the day we were having our live meeting in Atlanta, the first meeting of the year. It was raining the day before it rained. The day, the day before that it rained, it was raining. About the time that we we're going to go for the meeting to start and say, hey, Lord, we are this out of the meeting. If it's raining, people don't even want to come and pray. It's not raining. People will just sleep more. I say, Lord, there can't be rain, no. I told my daddy, I didn't call a prayer meeting. I said, Daddy, there can't be rain, no. And let me announce you, I'm going to wash my car. Rain was not dirty my car. That's what I was saying. Conversation. It did not rain. I know that Dr. Folaji was in a meeting. Who was in our live meeting in Atlanta? He did not rain until we finished. He started to drizzle. Elijah was a man of like passion. 
He said there should be no rain. There was no rain. Do you know that you can partner with God in prayer? He's waiting for you. Do you know the biggest thing for me? The Bible said in Psalm 115, verse 16, He said the heavens, the heavens belong to God. The earth he has given to the children of men. God is a God of precepts. He will not break his law. John 10, 35 says, scriptures cannot be broken. God will not invade Atlanta until an intercessor in Atlanta say, God, step in. God, step in. We need you. We need you. Ah, God will not invade Nigeria, regardless of how disgruntled and overturned or desolate Nigeria. Until an intercessor said, Lord, step in. Because the heaven is his dwelling place, but the earth he has given to the children of men to rule. He gave dominion to man to rule. And he's expecting you to stand in the gap for your city. Ah. There's so much to cover, but I believe we've covered what is most important. And there's tremendous power released in prayer. He said the effectual father prayer of a righteous man. Available much. The amplifier said he makes tremendous power available, dynamic in his working, setting free the captive. You want to set free captive in your community, your family, your foundation. Prayer is the key. And now that prayer becomes, that power becomes exponential. When we agree, 20 of us here, now let us agree in prayer. You know what? The Bible said when we chase a thousand, two, we put 10,000 to flight. The minute we are in agreement, if there's no disagreement, if there is no unforgiveness, there is no resentment, there is no bitterness, there is perfect agreement. Bible said in Psalm 33, verse 1, oh, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. If there's agreement in the spirit, you know what? Tremendous power available. As we declare this social liberty. It's not even for the matter of our speaking. It's not for the length of time, but for the potency of agreement, the unity of faith, the purpose and vision, united. Did you remember in Genesis 11, he said that these people, <laughs> they will rule this world. They will turn, <laughs> they will turn the mandate so if we let them do what they want to do. And even invaded and said, let's turn their language because there is nothing that they've imagined to do that they will not do. There is nothing that they've imagined to do. And that is what prayer does. Prayer gives you power, tremendous power, especially when we do it in agreement. And that's why I love the prayer of agreement. Not prayer of distraction. Remember, it said one person can with so much power. It said in that day, if you come and set for me and seek for me and search with all of your heart, if you pray to me with all of your heart, I will hear you. One man. That's why the prayer of Abraham can change things. Prayer of Moses. Moses was an intercessor as well. Job was an intercessor as well. Daniel, Esther, Mordecai, I could go down the list, on and on and on. You find one man moving and shifting atmosphere. Imagine if you find Daniel and Moses in the same place. Remember when God was bragging about righteous men, he said Noah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. He said they cannot even save themselves if they pray for Israel at this time. But he was making a point because they were atmosphere shifters. Are you an atmosphere shifter? Are you a paradigm shifter? Are you a change agency? Are you a catalyst in the spirit? Yes, you are. And you can move mountain by just little faith, as small as the mustard seed. But God is saying now, if we do it together, you see, I put it on the screen. As surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. That will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. A guy said to you, if two of you shall agree, name my truth, if you shall agree concerning anything, any, it will be done. Don't find an intercessor whose heart is in agreement with you. That thing is done is as good as God. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. He backs up his word above all of his day. He exalts it. And so the components of prayer, I shared it as we started. Adoration. Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Confession. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thank you. That is that kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Why did we put it for first? Because the first application because it just makes the beautiful acronym ACTS. But really, it's Thanksgiving that closes our prayer. It's the seal, the stamp, the seal of approval that makes sure our mail gets delivered. Supplication is give us our daily bread. Your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. And we can make it numerous. We can pray. The Bible says praying with all kinds of prayer and supplication in the, in the spirits. I'm about to close now. There are different kinds of prayer. Go and study it in your time. In the book. You have a prayer of faith, all kind of prayer, prayer of agreement, prayer of unity, prayer of intercession, consecration, petition. This is when somebody has a short time to live and you petition God. Or a nation, just like we have been petitioning God throughout the month of February for Nigeria. 
he has given us a word, a prophetic word, an altar of exchange. We have obeyed him and we know he's keeping his word over Nigeria. Prayer of thanksgiving, prayer of warfare. Remember, I told you, and types and prayer of inquiry where somebody marries. I've seen people, they marry in purity, they didn't do anything wrong, they are born again, they ask God, everybody approved, and waiting for the fruit of the womb. 10 years, 20 years. I've seen it happen to so many times. Abraham, what did Abraham do wrong not to have a child? Nothing. But the prayer of inquiry will show you. So Abraham had to be is an altar builder. He keeps asking God, what is going on? So in the scriptures, in Matthew 7, 7, 20, he said, ask, you receive. Seek, you find. No. So you keep asking. So asking is the first initial level. Yeah, hey, just asking. And then huh, when the answer is not coming, you start to seek. Knocking, persistence. And you see that Jesus Christ gave the parable of the widow who went to the unrighteous judge and got to continue to petition until the judge said, this woman will make me old. This man will make, wear me out. You know what? Let's give her a petition. Jesus Christ was trying to make a point that men always ought to pray and not to faint. Don't give up. Even if that situation requires inquiry, deep inquiry. And most time when you see prayer of inquiry is required for destiny to be activated, you must continue to ask. Seek, knock until you have the answer. It looks like a riddle, but you know, at the back of that riddle is solution. Just like Daniel prayed to God and God revealed to him the time of the solution of Israel was 70 years. And for the span of 70 years, until Daniel was well over in his 90s, the desolation was overturned. Israel went back to restoration and it's all of these things unfold. So it's the ask, seek, knock mandate. Prayer of inquiry. And then, Prayer watches. I don't know if we have time to discuss that after our prayer. So prayer watches. Anybody have question about prayer watches? I can answer it then. And then declaration and decrease. I love it. Affirmations. Craft scriptures. Ecclesiastes 8 for said, where the word of the king is, there is power. Luke 21, 15 says uh, that I'll give you a mouth and a wisdom that the enemy cannot resist. No, they say. We have come to the end of this class. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Sister Nolwakpo, you can turn off the recording now. We are going to pray and minister. If you need to go, you can go. We have Q&A. We have optional Q&A after this.